Greetings, stranger, and welcome to the Learned Pig here in Absalom's wise quarter. I apologize if I sound a little different tonight. It seems all the Turing has started to take its toll on my voice. Still, I am sure this temporary hindrance is nothing a night of carousing will not be able to fix. It is always a large crowd that graces this establishment in the evening hours, but luckily for you, I have managed to save one more seat at my table, and you are just in time. In mere moments, I will begin expounding on this city's Grand Council, which has, for better or worse, overseen the development of Absalom ever since its prototype was created by Eridan, the last Aslanti, and his founding laws. I have been summoned here, you see, as a sort of expert witness. Some students from the Absalom Academy of Law are shortly going to launch into a most fearsome debate about hypothetical reforms to the governmental system, and in the finest learned pig tradition, they will have to convince an increasingly inebriated audience of the merits of some rather complex proposals. Both the affirmative and the negative side have therefore agreed to permit me first to explain as swiftly as I may the overarching governmental structure of the city. While most locals are familiar with their immediate district councillors, I suspect there remains a surprising level of ignorance to the finer points of city governance. Well, does this all sound incredibly boring? Yeah, <laughs> well, I would not blame you, but then perhaps I should preface this by saying that the leaders of the world's most influential city are largely determined by whoever holds one of twelve magic artefacts, which can bring forth near infinite food and drink in times of siege, yet discussion of whose existence is punishable by confinement into the Black Whale prison. You see? The city at the centre of the world is not led by any ordinary government. It was created by the God of Humanity, and even today, not all his designs upon it have been discovered. I shall be splitting my testimony into two parts. The first part discusses the district councils and the low council, while the second discusses the high council. The brief pause between the two halves will serve as a well-earned drink break for my throat, I should think. Ah. I have been called forth. You relax, and please help yourself to the food and drink at my table while I explain the bizarre design of Absalom's government. And do forgive the first paragraph of my speech. It is traditional for those given to the Academy of Law, under the cover of darkness and alcohol, to open with an egregiously pontifical introduction. Good folk of the learned pig, I open my testimony to you here tonight under the assumption that you are aware of the overall governing structure of this ancient city. That you know, for example, that within this city's walls there are eleven administrative districts, one of which is presently lawless and unrepresented, and two special military zones, those being the imposing Flotsam Graveyard and the stoic Aslanti Keep. That you know, for example, that these are all overseen in some capacity by this nation's governing body, which is called the Grand Council. And that you know, for example, that the Grand Council is divided into two unequal halves, both in number and authority, fittingly called the high and the low. Yet beyond these assumptions, which I am now assured you have transcended into fact, I do not infer any knowledge from you. Be assured, therefore, that this testimony will be as thorough and vivacious as our esteemed porcine overlord yonder is wise and judicious. Let us begin. I think it is best to work our way upwards towards the Primarch's throne than in reverse, because the High Council of Absalom is among the most confusing and convoluted political bodies I have ever encountered. Therefore, let us pretend that you are a citizen of Absalom, living in one of its eleven districts. For the sake of argument, pretend that this district is not the Precipice Quarter, because it presently exists unrepresented by any council, save the one established by Watcherlord Ulfun II from his seat of Vigil's Hope. This is functionally a private organisation of knights, and so bears little influence on the rest of the city. So. Being a citizen of Absalom, you are represented first and foremost by your local district council. The district councils go by different names and have a variable number of councillors, but there are commonalities between them. 
Firstly, they are all responsible for the administration of their district, which includes the dispensing of justice and the funding of a district guard force. Normally, these are independent of other groups, but in the case of Westgate, the local council simply funds the Kortos cavalry to extend their jurisdiction onto the other side of the Sally Port, whence they are then known as the Sally Guard. Also note that in the Puddles, the District Guard is an unpaid volunteer force called the Muddied Center Reserve Civilian Corps that answers to the Nomark directly instead of to the council as a whole. While in the Wise Quarter, their Learned Guard is primarily responsible for the defense of the Forai Logos and serves the rest of the district out of courtesy more than anything else. District councils must finally collect taxes to fund themselves, plus a set additional percentage for use by the city as a whole. Now the Nomarch I have mentioned leads each council. It is a title that commands respect everywhere in Absalom, save the Petal District, where the council leader is called the Satrap instead. The Nomarchs are incredibly powerful individuals in their own right. I do not think it would be misleading to compare them to the petty kings and queens of lesser nations. You see, while the majority of each district council is elected each year, the title of Nomarch is a gift of the Grand Council, and residents have no mechanism of protesting their appointments. Moreover, once the title is conferred, the Nomarchs become self-sustaining and do not need to seek re-election to keep their positions on the Council. You can see this most clearly in the Puddles, where Nomarch Hygen Topkick swiftly dismissed his Council colleagues upon gaining the title. That said, the other districts do hold their nomarchs to reasonable account in local matters, and like most things pertaining to the district councils, any overreach can be corrected by edicts from the Grand Council. The final thing to note at this level is the fact that nomarchs are expected to appoint a prominent resident of their district to the council, who will join them on the low council, which we will come to momentarily. This means that each district council has two positions that are not elected, save the Nomarch's original election before gaining the title. And it is precisely these two positions that are subsequently dispatched to represent the district on the Low Council. This brings us to the Low Council. It is overall more powerful than the district councils, though individual members are typically not more powerful than the Nomarchs within their own districts. The Low Council currently consists of 49 members, though this fluctuates each year according to the whims of the High Council and the Electorate. Together, the Low Council is responsible for the quotidian governance of Absalom as a whole, especially in matters that do not extend beyond state borders. However, it is very important to understand that the business of government is not strictly partitioned into matters reserved for the Low Council and those reserved for the High. Rather, all matters are considered by the overall Grand Council, except for those deemed matters of note, which are considered only by the High Councillors. In other words, members of the High Council retain the right to participate in even mundane matters, such as the placement of certain festivals, or policies reacting to baleful harvests, or underwhelming taxes. Therefore, in practice, the Low Council is responsible for those duties which affect multiple districts, but not so greatly as to affect international relations. A plurality of its seats are always held by the district nomarchs, who by law are entitled to a Low Council position, and this number again, currently 10, is then held by their personal appointees, who are conventionally entitled to represent their district alongside them. After the district councillors, the next largest number of seats is commanded by those dubbed at-large politicians, which is Absalomian jargon for mostly elected. Currently, there are 15 of them. At-large seats are normally determined in annual, city-wide elections in which all citizens are eligible to participate, though there is often surprisingly little campaigning undertaken in election season. If you have joined me on my tour of the city, it should be no surprise to you that considerable string-pulling and money-changing goes on behind the scenes in Absalom's endless shadow war, to ensure that the most powerful and influential figures win the most votes. 
To be fair to the noble houses normally accused of facilitating this, it is my understanding that the majority of the election rigging is actually performed by the city's many churches, who want their high priests to occupy as many grand council seats as possible. Consequently, many of these positions are normally held by the clergy of prominent religions, though the population seems largely tolerant of this. Next, a handful of seats are always reserved for the city's most prominent guildmasters. Unlike the nomarchs, guildmasters are not entitled to a position, as indicated by the fact that there are currently only five of them on the Low Council, despite there being at least triple this number of notable guilds. At present, we have guildmasters from the Coalition of Artisans, the Perfumers Conglomerate, two from the Union of Carpenters, Stonemasons and Metalworkers, and finally one from the Woodcutters Guild. Then, four seats are reserved for Absalom's most prominent vassal settlements, two from Diabel and two from Eskadar. These seats are filled by appointees from each town's own governments, but because those same governments are themselves appointed effectively by the Grand Council, in practice their representatives here are often those who would rather live in Absalom proper whilst enjoying the perks of being a senior politician. Next, we have the three so-called ancient seats, one of each being reserved for the most senior diplomats from Assyrian, Taldor, and Kadir. Currently, these are filled by Grand Ambassador Dremdhet Salhar for Assyrian, Grand Ambassador Tolara Alvatin for Taldor, and Amir Talzar Gatan for Kadir. Being citizens of their respective nations, these seats are largely ceremonial, and the diplomats are expected to either abstain or vote in the affirmative for every proposal, a tradition that has, so far, always been respected. In exchange for this deference, the significant populations of these nations in Absalom enjoy the security of having a diplomat represent their interests on the council. The last two seats are held for the official city planner of Absalom, a deceptively powerful position that is responsible for overseeing the growth and development of the city's infrastructure, and finally for a representative from Aslanti Keep, which is so large as almost to warrant being a district unto itself. Aslanti Keep is the headquarters of the military, the First Guard, though its representative on the Low Council is not permitted to be the commander militant, because they are traditionally reserved a seat on the High Council instead. Moreover, the role of the Aslanti Keep representative is to advocate for the maintenance and security of the Keep itself, and not for the First Guard overall. It is a position based on location, like a nomark, uh, not on organisation, like a guildmaster. There is also a position called Siege Lord, which traditionally exists only in times of war. In such times, the Siege Lord of Absalom is granted a seat on the Low Council, and it was most recently held by Winsel Starborn, before he achieved even greater office. Ah, a brief recess has been called. In that case, I shall see you on the other side, stranger. The second half of my testimony will go into near intimate detail about the most senior power in the city at the centre of the world, its High Council. Well, until then.